Hey everybody, welcome to the Hoopercast, episode 130. Why don't I ever remember? Yeah. 130? <laughs> That's ridiculous. 130 something. It's like 130 plus. 137. It's it's tough because um I've got we have I, I can't remember the last one that was up, but there's also um there's also one I pre-produced that would have been out now if Premiere hadn't kept crashing. Ah. Um where I talk about Batman v Superman, which is an incredibly irrelevant and ill-timed review because no one cares. <laughs> and um, but I still say it'd be cool to do a, a like a commentary track for that. I know that's that's kind of like our side business. One day, Dustin is just doing right, just doing the MST three K. Yes, uh, pretty much. Dustin Weldon, everybody on remote hey. on uh, from the Atlanta area. How are you, Dustin? I'm all right. How are you, Hoover? I'm doing well, man. I'm. Uh, it's good to be back in the swing of things. It's good to be. If, if the viewers notice, the, there's just a blurry logo up right now as, as our video because you're all drunk. We put stuff stuff in your drink. Um, <laughs> we have we've had technical difficulties the last time, and it just the stream was way behind. Uh, so we just thought, well, that was distracting. So let's just do audio, um, yeah. and let's just go back to our old radio format, uh, for now. So. Um, anyway, it's going to be a blurry logo tonight, so hopefully it's That's all good. blurry because you haven't been poisoned. So right. Please. If, it, if it's blurrier than, it, than blurry, yeah. then like maybe, maybe it looks fine to you. That's a bad sign. Yeah, if, if, you, if you survive, please email us at hoopercast at gmail.com if you, if you survived this episode, please. Um, anyway, we are not streaming. We're not doing any of that stuff. We're just going to do a straight up uh, show tonight. So you are not listening to this live unless you are a telepath, in which case, welcome to the show. Please call in and tell us about yourself. We don't even need That's Google amazing. Voice or anything. Just I'd like to know your story and 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 secrets about my friends and relatives. Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so you heard about that new show, The Gifted? Uh, yes. It's pretty good. I saw the pilot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's a little mini review. It's there pretty go. good. All right, well, we'll, in we'll, catch, we'll catch more of that once uh, once we once we got more of those under our belts. Right. Um, let's talk about some film news off the top, Dustin. Um, okay. So, by the way, I don't know when that episode's going to be out. The Batman v Superman one. Uh, it, it's 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 Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, and La La Land. Yeah. But honestly, like it keeps crashing, and I'm just like, all right, well, you know, what? I might just cut off the other two and just do the one or do nothing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right, so, right, right. Anyways. Um, all right, so a few stories coming out. We haven't talked about film news in a while. We haven't had time, and that's kind of like right. what you and I enjoy, you know, most. Um, yep. in, you know, about this show. So um, I wanted to start off with a couple of things that I felt like were um, the most relevant to um, uh, culturally right now. As, as you know, Hugh Hefner uh, died last week. Um, yep. And uh, there's been a back and forth debate since then about whether or not he was an American icon. I heard it on the radio here in town. I've seen it online, obviously, whether or not he was like a liberator of women, an oppressor of women, um, a dirty, just a dirty old man, and a bunch of other, you know, things. Um, I'm going to go with the dirty old man. I don't know enough about him, honestly. He comes <laughs> off like a dirty old man, but then there's yeah. there's all the other stuff about, you know, the writers that were in the magazine that actually like, you know, expose the public to good writing. Um, yeah, yeah. Like Hunter, Hunter Thompson and um, William F. Buckley, I think, was in there. Mm. So it's just like you got, you know, you got ladies, but you also got good stories, too. Right, of, right, I right. I don't know. Um, anyway, so it's – I guess it's debatable, not really, if he was a good guy or not. <laughs> but um, you know who thinks he's a interesting enough guy to make a movie about is Brett Ratner. Um, oh. Did you – how were you aware of all this? Yeah, I mean, just briefly, like I saw the headline. Yeah, so the headline is that they are moving forward with a his corpse isn't even cold yet, and they're moving, Ugh. they're moving forward, and knowing Hugh Hefner, it never will be, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're moving forward with this um, with this biopic uh, starring Jared Leto as Hugh Hefner, um, and it's directed by uh, I believe it's directed by it's gonna be directed by Ratner. Yeah. Um, it's definitely being produced by him. Right. Uh, and he's, he's been wanting to do this for about 10 years. Um, yeah. and I think at the time it was, uh, it was gonna be Robert Downey Jr. playing Hugh Hefner. Ah. And now, you know, so it got put on hold for a number of reasons. It's weird. Cause when I first saw the headline, I thought that they were like, Oh, he's dead. Let's do that movie. Mm. And it just, it, it, I guess it was just, you know, quote unquote, good timing. 
that, right, right, right. that he just uh, passed. But um, people are coming out against the whole project in general. A lot of people are calling it a hat trick of douchebags. <laughs> Oh, You've true. got Ratner, Jared Leto, and Hugh Hefner. I don't really understand why Jared Leto's, a, you know, a d bag, mm. um, but apparently he is. Uh, so, it, it, I, to me, it's like one of these things is not like the other. You got Hugh Hefner, Every Brett Ratner, and then you've got. Oh, hold and on, this stupid ad's playing. That's gonna panic. shut up, Steven Spielberg. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> um, so, but to me, Jared Leto does not fit this um, this thingy anyway. Um, do you yeah i don't think either of us are interested in this film particularly <laughs> no I, I i couldn't care less but i would i will say like i'm tired of jared leto like i don't know who decided he was an actor <laughs> um like and that's obviously coming from somebody who's never seen anything he's ever done but um prominently I, you I, mean was that like prominently starred in you mean yes yes exactly okay so so it's like i i haven't no real basis of his capabilities as a leading man. But I do know that I'm just tired of seeing him just try, tired of his face. Um, and, and I'm tired of like, like all that that came out about the Joker back when suicide squad was being released, really put a sour mm-hmm. taste in my mouth. Like the gifts he was sending to his co-stars that now he's recanting and saying he didn't. And it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's I, the Joker, I don't not me. Right, right, and I'm like, no, I don't, I don't believe anything that you say now. And if you did, you're a jerk. And if you didn't, you let that go for publicity. Right. Um, initially, so either way, I don't care for you. And you know, I don't know. I just, it, uh, I don't he, know. He doesn't even. This is one of those things that bothers me. That he doesn't really look like him, and I know that personally, he must not be anything like him. But the quote from him says that. Um, Jared said, I want to play him. I want to understand him. You know, mm. it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm sure that his personality is out there on display in many things called magazines, but have at it, right. I guess. So we'll right. see. They'll put a lot of like, you know, scantily clad, you know, young women in this and, and, and a bunch of celebrity cameos probably. And, yeah. you know, it'll end up being one of those Wolf of Wall Street type deals where it's just about a guy who's kind of unlikable, but he nevertheless had an impact on something. So, you know, yeah. it's going to be called, Oh, sorry. That's not what it's going to be called. Um, I don't know what it's going to be called. Oh, um, well, no, there it is again. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? It's probably gonna be something dumb like Hefner or yeah, like, like Hef. well, there's, there's some, there's some docu-series, um, on Amazon called American Playboy, the Hugh Hefner story. That would have been a cool name. I mean, you oh, know. Yeah. anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what's going on uh, with that. I also um, heard a story about uh, Kate Winslet. So there it is. Um, on According to Deadline.com, Kate Winslet is going to be joining uh, the next couple of Avatar films. And Which do you care about these? No, I was going to ask I'm you. I'm so same glad thing. you said that because I, I don't care. I was going to ask you the same thing. So of course, of course, they've last worked together in you know in Titanic, which was um you know twenty years ago, yeah. um and so she's going to be on, she's going to be in a starring role in um what they're calling the ongoing Avatar adventure, um and uh, some character named Ronald or Ronal, um like tonal but with an R. Um, like Ronald, but without the D. Right, exactly. Oh. Um, right, so uh, anyway, I, I don't, here's the, the the reason I don't care about this, and we've talked about it before, is just like, so this, you know, okay, it was a fun thing to watch, it's a cool spectacle and everything, yeah. but they did that thing where they just waited to, I don't, I don't, I know they take a long time to make, but there's going to be like a lot of these, and yeah. like I'm looking right here, they've got four planned sequels, and they're yeah. shooting them all at the same time. Production for all four planned Avatar sequels officially began on September 25th in Manhattan Beach, California. The first film will be released on December 18th, 2020. The second sequel will open on December 17th, 2021, followed by Avatar 4 on December 20th, 2024, and Avatar 5 on December 19th, 2025. Didn't the first movie come out in 09? What if it makes like no money? You could have no I know. choice but to just spit them all out. I, I saw, um, I don't remember where it was that I saw this, but the headline was, you know, it's official. The, they're going to be the, the most expensive movies ever made. Yeah. Like each one individually. Oh my God. And, <laughs> and it's just like, 
that's a huge number like that you're banking on a success from 2009 to replicate that success yeah it's just not it's just not good business um but I, you know my my whole thing about it is like i don't i don't think there's a world to explore there like i have no idea and it's like everything that comes out about it makes me say nope like the the only thing that has come out that I'm like okay maybe is the Kate Winslet thing because she's a seasoned actress she knows what she's doing, but at the same time, you see like there's a there's a cast photo now of like these kids that are in it and it looks like a Disney Channel show. Oh boy! Because they're they're all like you know in you know trendy clothes and whatnot, <laughs> and I guess some of them are going to be Navi so they'll be mocap or whatever. But um, regardless, it's like they all look like trendy with like their trendy Disney Channel haircuts and you know, burgeoning pop careers. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, but apart from that, it's like, Oh, and I heard that the, the actual title of these is going to be the avatar sequels. What? And then, and then colon and whatever. So it'll be like the instead, you know how there's like the Twilight Saga. That sounds like, like you know, a working like title or whatever. Yeah, it's called like the you're, Avatar. You're, you're putting an industry term in the title. Correct. Sequel is not a term that you use in a title. That's like calling uh, the movie the Hugh Hefner biopic, the Hugh Hefner story. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's like making a movie All right. called Avatar. This is a film. <laughs> and, it, and it's like, that makes no Semi, sense. Semicolon, so, barely. <laughs> you know, or the, so says James Cameron. The, the thing is, um, like, th- this This is one of those things that I'm not going to see in theaters unless, like, one of my kids begs me to go. But even then, I don't know if they'll be old enough to go see, you know, a movie with, where they light horses on fire. <laughs> and right, exactly. Run through the Slow forest. motion horses. I remember James Cameron. It's been a while, but I remember that fire horse. I know, right? The fire we, horse we came up in convers- casual conversation when we were in Orlando, didn't it? It did. It did. Like a month ago. Oh, wow. Yep. Anyway. But, you know, I don't know. I just think they've waited too long, and I think they're 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 putting – I mean, it's a classic case of foot and mouth. Like, they're going to talk these things up, and, and you know, I, I hope they do well, but they're not going to. I mean, I just have this sneaking suspicion that sequel is going to be like – I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the second one will do okay, but by the time that third one rolls around, I think it's going to be fatigue. Man, uh, who knows? I'm, I'm not. I'm not particularly uh, hyped about it. I, I, th- I disagree about the world. I think there is a world to explore, but uh, but they've got to, and I just don't expect them to up their game with the story. And that's yeah, where, because yeah, yeah. like the world is 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 the marketing tool for this for this yeah. thing. So the world's going to, you know, the spectacle, it's all going to be there. But but you need to had me a little bit more invested in what's happening with the characters instead of I want I'm looking forward to this action sequence but I own Avatar yeah. on Blu-ray it's like the first Blu-ray I bought and yeah. I I've, I've watched it one time since I bought yeah. it in like yeah. 2010 yeah 7 years ago yeah which is telling so like yeah I just don't, who cares you know yeah. I don't you know now be, yeah. granted now that this is in my brain my uh, it, eventually it's going to be like oh I'll watch Avatar since I haven't right, seen it in a right. while but it's just like an eclipse man it's it's going to you know you just have to watch it every 10 years just for the spectacle of it. Right, but I might not even keep it. <clears throat> so, right, exactly, yeah. Um, well, let's um, – oh, real quick, let's hit one more of these stories. Um, I'm right. interested in this one in particular. I want to get your take on it. Um, hmm. uh, you know, maybe it's best we float it because I want your take on it. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, let's, 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 let's hang on to this, uh, to this Sonic the Hedgehog story for a little okay. bit later if we have time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we can come back to it at the end. I'm very interested in that. Um, okay. Let's move on to um, to, to, to some uh, film reviews. I'm oh, sorry. I should have done that. Okay. Um, so I, I, I want to talk about this one because this one um, this one's close to home for me. Uh, I want to talk about Gerald's Game, uh, which yeah. is uh, a brand new film. It's, it's really interesting. Um, so we'll talk about the film first. So the film is directed uh, by Mike Flanagan. It's... Um, it's on Netflix. It's a Netflix film. It's a Netflix mm-hmm. original. It's on Netflix right now. You can watch it. Um, and uh, it star- stars um, Carla Gugino and Bruce Greenwood. And yep. it's adapted from a Stephen King novel. Um, mm. So these are all pretty cool things. And um, it's about a couple who go to like this Bay House getaway. And, um, and you know, because of this sex game they're playing, she's handcuffed to the bed and something happens and, um, 
and the movie is a really a psychological thriller about um, this woman kind of surviving and coming to grips with um, things that happened in her past. So mm. uh, this film is fantastic. Have you seen? Mm. You saw the trailer for this, right? I saw the trailer. Yeah, it is so good. Um, mm. And I, 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 we watched it. Um, the Mrs. Hooper and I um, watched it on Sunday without even mm. knowing anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and I was really pleased. Um, it's so well shot. Um, the t- um, the tension's really good. The 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 rules that they set up for um, the character interactions um, and uh, are 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 adhered to and mm. and subtly executed. Um, it's um, it's minimalist, but it's it's effectively um, scary. I guess it's a horror. It's definitely it, technically this is calling it a horror film. Okay. It's a very good horror film because it, it because it's on the psychological thriller, thriller line. There's no jump scares in this film. Yeah. And I wow. was very happy about that. Um, right, right. So I want to particularly praise the directing by Mike Flanagan. Um, just, you know, understated uh, tension was really good here. And um, I really want to praise Carla Gugino's performance. Um, she does so much of this movie on her own. She's on screen like the entire time. Um mm. And she she's great, um, mm. and uh, I, I think she she I mean it's pretty possible she'll get nominated for this if they take it seriously at the yeah, academy, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, Bruce Greenwood is also great. Um, that guy's always great. Yeah, he's he's great. Um, and uh, I was I just really dug this film. Um, yeah. There's a character. There's another character that sort of shows up later in the film. Um, whenever um, it's nighttime. And mm. that character is is very subtly terrifying, <laughs> um, and uh, and 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 that whole part of it's really cool. Um, mm. So my only beef with it would be that the um, the ending is just a tad disconnected from what's kind of going on with her, mm. um, but uh, but I still think it fits and it plays and um, it's interesting. Gotcha. Um, so uh, yeah, this is this is one of those films where where they're talking to a personification of a part of their personality, mm. basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she talks to another Carla Gugino in this film because they, you know, and, and, but but like I said, like th- they're only talking about things that she would know. Like yeah, so they they don't do this cheat where they have exposition. Like how could she possibly know that? How would the figment of her imagination understand this? Like it's yeah. all very well adhered to. So from a screenwriting perspective, I was pleased with that. Just the directing performances. Go yeah. check out Gerald's Game on Netflix, you guys. It's really worth a watch. Um, the reason I like it so much too is this was shot in Mobile and Fairhope. Oh wow, where I live. Um, and, uh, so there's, of course, um, the majority of it I don't recognize cause it's in a house, but, um, mm-hmm. but like, you know, the court, there's a courthouse there's city, there's, there's areas of it. They mention it by name. I mean, she's on a balcony actually Dustin, at one point she's on a balcony in, in on, on Royal street in mobile. And you can see the Hampton Inn in the background where we all stayed oh, I, really? when, cool. for my wedding. Yeah, yeah. So like this, this fun stuff, like, Oh, there's the Hampton, you know? And, uh, yep. um, it's, it's just, uh, and, and, the director Mike Flanagan. I know that that's his doing because Flanagan directed um, Oculus, starring Karen Gillan, which was mm-hmm. also shot in Mobile. Yep. So yep. it must have been him who said, "Well, I've got a good location for this." Fairhope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. So really good film, just for Mobile too. I mean, it's. I mean, we've had a few films shot here. Um, uh, Get Out was shot in Fairhope, um, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's just really good for the area to have these really good films coming out. Um, and so I'm, I'm just, I'm happy for the, I'm happy this is a good movie and I'm happy for the area to be getting the business. Yeah. Um, so Dustin, I definitely recommend you and anyone, I mean, again, it's on Netflix. This isn't in theaters or anything. Everyone presumably listening has a Netflix account. Go yep. check out Gerald's Game. Um, people are calling this. A, a, people are calling this film and, and it part of a resurgence of good Stephen King adaptations. Sweet. You know, uh, you know, they exclude the Dark Tower because apparently yep. that wasn't well received, but it and Gerald's game are getting positive buzz for Stephen King. Yeah. Sweet. Um, it reminded me, at least the trailer reminded me of buried with Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Um, just in that it's like, you know, an impossible to escape situation. And, you know, it's like a single person kind of, you know, struggling to survive in, in a way of the essence. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, it, I, 
I know I think we watched Buried together uh, in college, uh, and I wasn't a fan of the way that Buried ended. Would you say that this ends better than Buried? Yes. Or uh, okay, got it. Yeah. Um, okay. Because because yeah. the, these types of movies become a, a challenge as a screenwriter, I'm sure to you know not come up with some sort of cheap way because essentially you're you're writing yourself into a hole, and and you don't want to you know take the easy way out. Um, so yeah. Okay. Right. No, Sweet. Gerald's Game is great. So definitely positive marks uh, for Sweet. that film. Good job, Mike Flanagan. Good job, Carla Gugino. Um, and good job, Netflix. Um, Sweet. Uh, yeah. Um, Dustin, you saw you saw a film also, right? I did. So An let's go film. way back for this retro review. This is from 1959, Anatomy of a Murder. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a movie that I've wanted to see for a long time. It's directed uh, by Otto Preminger, um, starring Jimmy Stewart. So this is one that I, has just always been on my list. And um, I, for a while, just thought the only way to do it was just to buy the Criterion you know, DVD or Blu-ray, which is a little expensive. But uh, it's actually available on Hulu right now. Um, it is, you know, uh, a part of that, um, uh, the classic film kind of section there, um, it is expiring soon. So hopefully if you are interested in this, you'll check it out as soon as possible to knock it off. Um, it's about two hours and 40 minutes, but it's well worth your time. Um, even though it, it, it does feel long for what is essentially a courtroom drama. Wow. Um, but, um, but yeah, so essentially the film stars uh, Jimmy Stewart as um, an out of out of work uh, attorney who uh, stumbles on this case where a, a man um, in in the film played by Ben Gazzara, um, his wife is uh, raped and he goes to confront and kill. Uh, the man who raped her. Um, and uh, so now he's in prison uh, for the rape and, uh, or for, I'm sorry, for the murder. And it, it's Jimmy Stewart's job to get him off of a life sentence. Um, so um, it's, it, it's an interesting sort of journey into the, the morals behind it. You know, is this a justified killing? If someone were to attack your wife in this way and you murdered him, is that justified? Is that moral or is it still immoral? But, you know, in some way we as humans just kind of justify it more, um, you know, and, and as a, as an attorney, how do you deal with a, a client who is guilty and is not necessarily fighting the fact that he's guilty but rather uh, hoping for uh, uh hoping to get off even though uh he did what he did um so it's um it plays like a detective story so th- throughout the the film we're not quite sure if he did indeed uh kill uh this man that raped his wife and in fact it's a little fuzzy whether she was actually even raped so everything is kind of played in a gray area where um, Jimmy Stewart has to kind of discover uh, the truth behind all of these stories that seemingly conflict or are just sort of a little weird somehow. Um, so it's got great performances, great characters. Um, every character in here is super memorable. And I think just from a screenwriting perspective, this is worth studying because uh, a lot of times courtroom dramas tend to um, you know, either play in stereotypes so that you can remember characters and then the characters aren't deep or they treat the characters as though they're three-dimensional characters and then you kind of lose who they are as people. Um, but, but this film um, – I think does a great job of giving each character it's uh, their own unique personality um, while never muddying the waters with who's who or what is what. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, it, it's thoroughly enjoyable. Like I said, it's a little bit long, um, but it's incredibly enjoyable and incredibly, um, you know, cathartic at the end. So I think there's, um, a lot of people do say this is one of the, one of the greatest films. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know that I, I loved it like that, but I do know that it's certainly worth your time. Um, and if you are a lover of of classic films and of old films or of Saul Bass, who did the uh, opening title sequence, you will, I think, get a lot out of this film. Um, 
you know, if you're like me and you just love a good detective story, you're going to love this because it does keep you guessing and, and kind of put you in the in the seat of Jimmy Stewart, who's not sure who to trust and who to believe. Um, and so it's great in that way. Um, you're, you're, you're never feeling like you're getting the whole story and you're never feeling like any of these characters are actually telling the truth. Um, and so uh, it, it's just a great watch. And, and I found myself watching it in, in segments and and honestly, I, I was hooked um, to the point where I, I haven't been in a long time. It makes great use of, of like I said, it's screenplay. The actors do do just phenomenal jobs in bringing the characters to life. And then on top of that, the camera work, uh, the staging, blocking, everything is just on point, firing on all cylinders. It's a great film to study. So if you're into something more academic, this is great. But if you just want a good detective story, also great. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's free. It's on Hulu. So if you do have a, a subscription, check it out before it goes away. Um, I would highly recommend it. Absolutely. And Jimmy Stewart's always great, too. He is. Uh, you know, you rarely see a movie with Jimmy Stewart where you're like, ah, eh. somehow he just kind of elevates everything he's in. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. And oh, it's got George C. Scott in it. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Yeah, you may know from Patton or from Dr. Strangelove. Mm -hmm. um, that guy is amazing. Or The Rescuers Down never... Under. Yeah, The Rescuer Down Under. I will never not love George C. Scott. Joanna! Uh, <laughs> Joanna! Um, he kind of reminds me, uh, I don't know if, if anybody else gets this, but he kind of reminds me of Woody Harrelson in a way. Like, I feel like Woody Harrelson is the modern day was, George C. Scott. Those are two people I would never have thought to compare to each other. I know. I have no idea why. I just feel like they are the same person. That's weird. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, that's good, man. That's, that's a good recommendation. Yeah. I'm glad to. Um, it's it's because it's tough sometimes for some people, including myself, admittedly, to to get into older films because uh, yeah. either they don't hold up or their the pace is just too slow. But what you often get from films back then is you get a good story because the limitations upon the filmmaker are so much more restrictive than what we have today. Yeah. So more, so much more emphasis was on story and and the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a big yeah, plus. no, absolutely. It's dialogue heavy. Um, and so if you want to learn screenwriting, if you want to learn how to write dialogue, I think you can study this film. So it, 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 it highly recommended. All right. Um, all right. Well, why don't we move, why don't we move on, Dustin? Um, uh, well, you want to talk about, um, something you're watching, right? Oh, I was just going to say, got a couple uh, I've, minutes, I think. yeah, I've, I've recently decided to check out Samurai Jack. Uh, I never watched it in its original, uh, run. Uh, but I know that Toonami just, or sorry, Adult Swim just brought it back. Um, so it's, it's back. It's better than ever. Um, and I think they just ended the series. It was originally ended after its fourth season, but they did not wrap up the story. So however many odd years later, 10 years later, who knows? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time, probably more than 10 years. I don't know when it ended. Um, it uh, They brought it back. They finished out the story, let Jindy Tartakovsky uh, finish up the story he always had in mind. And um, and so I decided, you know what, now that it's over, I want to I wanna go watch it. And um, so I'm in the middle of season three right now, um, and I'm loving it. If you are interested, um, follow me on Twitter. Um, I do have um, – I don't I don't live tweet or anything, but I do at the end of each season give a good little uh, recap of the season, what I thought were some standout episodes. Um, and so, um, yeah, I you know I don't know why I mean I do and I don't know why I didn't watch this when I was a kid. I think it's because it's so so little dialogue and it's one of those stories that lasts series long as opposed to episode long or even season long. So so as a kid, it's probably I, I just imagine it's tough to jump into an episode that has no dialogue and you have to figure out what's going on and you don't even know what's happening in that in that scene much less that episode and you don't even know what's going on in the grand scheme of the whole series so um i can see why uh maybe kids weren't so into it at the time although maybe they were i don't know i wasn't um yeah i but, wasn't but i had no reason to not be i just i just didn't yeah, get around to watching it but it seemed yeah. cool yeah it was just a few times that it happened to be on i was just like yeah it seems cool but i don't know what in the world's going on um and so you know i it just never 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 tickled my fancy but uh but yeah i'm enjoying it now so 
Yeah. I will, I'll keep you posted. I'm definitely interested in seeing that, even just for like, you know, my kids, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that's definitely a good time for me to get into it. Um, all right. Well, why don't we move why don't we move ahead um, to um, I want to tackle that film news story um, before we talk about what's in theaters um, now. OK, OK, um, because I really am interested um, uh, in, in your take on this. Um, so they're going to have a live action film. Yes. About Sonic the Hedgehog. Right. Um, and it's going to be directed by Tim Miller, who yep. uh, directed Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to read through this story. Mm. Um, but every headline was something along the lines of Sonic movie speeds ahead, speeds forward, speeds right. in production, <laughs> on the fast track. I was like, there are no original jokes. Kill me. <laughs> So, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, what can you tell me about this, Dustin? Because the very one of the very first um, uh, film debates I watched you have was regarding Sonic. <laughs> yes. Before we well, even the YouTube communities met. are a buzz. Um, so <laughs> um, that's a little inside joke for you. Um, it is. Seriously, though, so, like my, my first exposure to Dustin's film knowledge was he was telling someone talking about a Sonic movie that they were wrong and they sh- and they were misinformed. <laughs> yes, correct. And they were. The first, um, I think the first words I heard you speak were, that's not true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Yeah. And it's so funny because I, I like looking back on it, like there was no reason for me to even like chime in. Right. I, I didn't, I didn't know these people. I didn't know this guy. Like, <laughs> like, but I was just so Our offended. First day of class in college. Friends. Yes, I was just so offended by his flagrant lack of of common sense, um, <laughs> and and this continues today. <laughs> it does, it does. Um, so, so a little bit of history on the production of it. Um, uh, originally, the film was to be a Sony release. Um, for whatever reason, Sony backed out, decided they didn't want to make the film, um, and now Paramount has picked it up. So it's it's because they suck. They're just making yeah, terrible just, decisions. I'm just I'm glad Sony Sony just stop. Yeah. Uh, so so Paramount's making the film. Um, last I heard, it's still planning to be a CG live action hybrid. Uh, I guess a la like Smurfs or Garfield or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, which you know I'm not crazy about. I think it should be totally animated. Um, I think it makes more sense that way. Um, and you know, as perfect as Danny DeVito might be as Doctor Robotnik, I don't think uh, it, it oh, tonally. Dear. I don't think Ash. Um, so 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 here's the thing um for me you know i'm a big fan of sonic the hedgehog it was a huge part of my childhood um for me i played the video game yeah a lot of people um a lot of people our age um i you know i grew up uh playing the games just like everybody else but my first exposure to sonic was not the games it was the tv show um so in my mind i i always think of sonic as um uh, the most cinematic video game character Mm. and the reason i say that is because my first experience with him was on television my first experience was in in you know in narrative form not in video game form right Um, he wasn't just an avatar for you he was a character in and of himself correct um you know he he definitely was a product of the 90s he was this you know bart simpson of the video game world he was edgy and he had an attitude um he wasn't mario who you know admittedly had no character right. um, and even even in the in the animated series they made for mario he had no character he was just a guy um no discernible character traits we don't know um, what bothers him you know. right like we have no idea but with sonic like we know that you know if something's taking too long he gets impatient we know right. that he's he he loves his friends but he's he doesn't like to share the glory. Like we know these, these flaws that Sonic has. And we also know what he wants, which is excitement. And we know that he wants to be seen as a hero and we know that he wants, you know, this, that, and the other. And so, um, you know, I think that, uh, for me, Sonic has the the biggest potential of all video games to have a really great character arc. And for me, for my money, I think Sonic is um, maybe the only video game character, or at least the best video game character, to uh, teach kids, you know, about life. Um, I think he's he's highly valuable 
um, in, in doing that in the same way that, um, you know, maybe like Ninja Turtles, uh, had sort of a, a character for every kid, right? You were either a Donatello or you were a Leonardo. Um, same with Sonic, you know, you're, you're either a Sonic or you're a Tails or you're a Knuckles. And I think that that, um, that plays really well for kids. So, so to me, I think this has the potential of being the best. I know it's a low bar, but the best video game movie. I love the fact that Tim Miller's involved. I never saw Deadpool, but I love the fact that we're getting a guy who's well versed in a sarcastic, witty brand of comedy, which I think right. suits Sonic. Because you can't go back to that Bart Simpson '90s Sonic mentality. I think you have to have to bring it into. 2017 and so i think the best way to do that is to give him you know almost like a spider-man or deadpool sort of like a deadpool light version of comedy where you know he's able to um be wacky and be goofy but at the same time you know poke fun at his at his enemies and 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 whatever but at the same time you know able like spider-man to kind of learn new things as he goes and learn that his friends have something to offer and that he needs to share the glory with them or 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 whatever the case may be, you know, I think there's plenty of of lessons to be learned in that Sonic universe. Um, so to me, you know, I, I think this is good news. I worry that that you know, and, and I know I just praised Tim Miller, but I do worry that it'll become a comedy and it won't be the yeah. life lesson movie that I kind of want it to be, um, and it, it won't be as instrumental to kids as, say. Um, the second Sonic TV show was for me, um, where, you know, Dr. Robotnik is taking over everything and destroying, you know, all the flora and fauna in the world and Sonic and his freedom fighters have to fight back against a tyrannical, you know, overlord. I mean, this is, you know, big stuff. Um, and, uh, and, and I don't want it to become like a, a wacky Robotnik has a few goofy s- sidekicks and, you know, they're going to do some kooky things, but I hate that hedgehog. Wow. Right. And, you know, you know, all this stuff, like I want it to be like a dark Robotnik and I want him to be roboticizing people and turn like turning Sonic's friends into robots and they lose their <laughs> cell themselves in this, you know, metal shell. Um, and, and I want there to be stakes and I want it to feel heavy and weighty. Um, and I also don't want it to be overly preachy about environmentalism, even though that is what Sonic is. Um, but it can be heavy handed. And so, um, you know, I, I think two things. One, I'm excited to see what they do with it, but I'm also approaching it with trepidation because I want it – like I have this picture-perfect version in my head of that it's some crazy amalgamation of comedy and something that kids can quote and laugh about for years, but it's also something that's going to teach them a lesson, but it's also going to be something that you know, is deep and, and, and meaningful and, Mm -hmm. uh, epic and, you know, it's all these things. And, and, and I worry that it's going to become lowest common denominator, but, um, but we'll see, you know, I'm excited for it. Um, again, I wish it was all CG, but, um, but I'm excited and, 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 and happy that it's happening, um, and happy that it's happening, you know, at all so well yeah. here's my beef with it so i so all the character stuff you just mentioned um is a hopefully they're doing this thing you know like is, is a hopefully as in like, yeah. there's hope that they'll get that right yeah i'm sort of angry that they've already decided on a visual format i don't agree with um yes i agree yeah. it shouldn't be live action um yeah. the first thing i'm thinking of for for sonic's world i mean a lot of this is probably influence from the video game but sure i think of speed racer yeah yeah i think of like that giant colorful scale of like these this land couldn't possibly exist like and cotton candy bubble gum you can't explain you know the visual landscape of this and try to tell me that these are real people just animate everything it'll just be so much easier and better and you know i i'm not interested you know i don't know um so Anyway, that's that's really my only thoughts on it. So we'll we'll see how this how this goes. I'm, um, uh, I agree. I, yeah. I hope Tim Miller kind of backs off on that. Yeah. Um, it works better as a as an animated. All right. Well, let's move on to um, let's move on to what's what's in theaters. Uh, yeah. Opening up this week. Um, I looked at a couple things. Um, there's a ton of stuff opening. Um, but Dustin and I only really talk about the stuff that that um, uh, that 
you know appeals to us um like victoria and abdul <laughs> right uh, <laughs> i was thinking more like dinah um, or bad grandmas <laughs> yes goodness my little pony the movie um so a couple of things caught my eye obviously blade runner 2049 uh opening friday um mm. so uh Blade Runner, I still need to talk about this on the show because I still need to watch the final cut, but Blade Runner, by and large, is a very boring film um, that you can that, that filmmakers ought to appreciate um, you know, because of the, the world building and, and, and the technical execution of it, um, but it's boring. But So this film is not directed by Ridley Scott, um, but um, from what I hear is very good, and from the trailer I saw is very visually faithful uh, and consistent with the Blade Runner world, which is really important to me. If you're going to do a sequel, yeah. it's like it, at least may, let, let me believe these are the same characters. And you know, um, so that's directed by Denis Villeneuve, who did uh, uh, Arrival and Prisoners. Um, so uh, both looked, of which were amazing. I'll, and I'll check this out. Um, yeah, you know, but I'm not. You know, I don't go to the theaters, people, and it's not really for any real reason except for money. So, but yeah. this would be something I'd be excited to see in theaters. You know, I I agree with you. I think Blade Runner is a good movie, but it's more academic than it is actually it's enjoyable. It's a big think piece. Yeah, there's yeah. Not, there's not enough action in it. Yeah, and I'm not yeah, like it, an, I'm not like an action monger, but there's not enough action. No, no, beats. no. There's not enough of Deckard yeah. doing stuff. It, there's it's, a lot of him it's, interviewing people and 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 sort of being a little handsy with with the female lead. <laughs> and, it, to me, it's more atmospheric. Like when I think yeah. back on Blade Runner, I just think of like like a keyboard like a synthesizer just going bow, 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 bow. Yeah. and then you just see like a car going meow. and uh, then and like that's it like that's what the world is some smoke and then some angry chinese guy like yelling in the yeah. background exactly like, that's yeah. it did you did you see anything that peel that, that catches your eye um you know the mountain between us I think is interesting just for Kate Winslet and Idris Elba. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would be interesting to see. Also, Bo Bridges is in it. Okay. And uh, I always I have a soft spot for Joe Bri uh, for Joe. I don't even I didn't even get his name right. Uh, for for <laughs> that soft spot. <laughs> Can't remember his name. I, I have a soft spot for Bo Bridges just because I feel like he's the the unloved Bridges. Right. Well. Uh, <laughs> He is the burned bridge. Uh, yes, he's the burned bridge. Um, and uh, you know, but uh, yeah, eh. I, it's not one I'd rush out and see in theaters. I don't think. But no, I'll, I'll, I'm interested to see it, but not in theaters. Like I, I love a good survival uh, story, and the, I like yeah. the two act, the two leads. So we'll see. Yep. I've got a couple more minutes here. I want to uh, uh, briefly. We won't do box office this, this time. We can do that. Um, next week for these films we just mentioned so i'm sure blade runner will do pretty well um yeah. probably rule the roost um yep uh and then i wanted to talk about a couple of things uh about at the at the crescent theater because i'm i usually mention them on the show when i can um uh people who are listening the crescent theater is an independent movie theater in downtown mobile it's um better than other chain theaters you're going to go to because um they, it's just a better atmosphere. There's um, you can get some alcoholic beverages, but more importantly, you're seeing you're seeing a movie with an audience that it really enjoys the cinema and not just regular people going to the theater because they're bored. Which Dustin and I harp on to continuously that that's just a big problem with going to theaters these days. Is it's just not yeah. special anymore. The Crescent yeah. makes it special, and they do that a lot of times with the films they choose. So right now they're playing um, Year by the Sea. And uh, I think they're playing this Pearl Jam concert uh, movie, mm. but then starting October 6th, which I believe is, is well, that's this weekend. is the, Yeah, that's Friday. Yeah, Friday, Battle of the Sexes ah. um, with that with Steve Carell and Emma Stone. Um, so, yeah, that starts on Friday. Um, sorry, there it is. Yeah, and that starts on Friday. And it goes all the way through Thursday, October 19th. So you got a, you got shows at 2 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, and at 8.20. Yeah. Um, so if I think if you're smart, you go into the two o'clock one while everyone's at work, uh, in my opinion. Yes. But uh, yeah, they've all they've got some good stuff, and so coming up in I think November they've got the Florida Project with Willem Dafoe, which looks mm -hmm. really interesting to me. So yeah. anyway, um, if you're in Mobile, check out the Crescent. It's great, and um, especially if it's playing something you were going to see anyway, go see it over there. Um, I don't want to like you know crap on AMC and all those places, but the Crescent's just special. Um, 
and uh, yeah, go to some. Well, there's there's just always there. something about those independent chains that can they that that take pride in the fact yes. that they're showing a film. Um, you know, and, and again, you know, just like you said, not to knock anybody else or the chains, but um, there there's not the same level of right. showmanship put in at some of those places. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I, exactly. So, uh, check out the Crescent. It's great. I saw, I saw Django and chain there on 35 millimeter. Um, mm. so that for the first time is where I saw that. And I saw true grit for the first time in there too, also on film. So great place. Oh, sweet. Um, the Morgan, Cohen's true grit. Yes. Or, okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, Anyway, well, that's going to be the show for today. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, but uh, thanks for listening. Uh, keep uh, Follow the YouTube page, um, Hoopercast Pod. And um, uh, you can get us on Twitter. Where are, you on it? Where are you at at Twitter, Dustin? You at Dustin Weldon? I think so. Give me a second. Okay. Hold I'm, I'm, I'm at Connor Dempsey. It's the scene, you know. Um, so I'll, it'll be between me tweeting about my kids. But I'll be tweeting about movies, too, whenever I think of stuff. Um but uh, yeah, follow us on those uh, platforms. And um, is that your handle? Yep, it's at Dustin Wallace. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, thanks for listening, you guys. I don't have any playout music, so we'll just say goodbye for now. Thanks for listening, and see you later. Later. <laughs>